Welcome back to the Two Minute Warning. Today I'm looking at the New York football giants after they just signed Kenny Galladay, a wide receiver from the Detroit Lions in free agency to a four year, $72 million deal. But before getting into that topic, question for those of you viewing, who, comment down below, who is your all time favorite New York Giants player, whether it be Justin Tuck, Michael Strahan, Eli Manning, whoever it is, comment down below and I will let you know who my favorite player at, is at the end. But getting to this topic, like I said, Kenny Galladay, probably the best wide receiver in the NFL free agent market that was available. Of course, Allen Robinson was probably, or Chris Godwin was probably gonna take that number one spot, but both of them getting franchise tagged by their, by their teams. Kenny Galladay became the number one guy, and there's a lot of speculation. He was going to go to the Giants, but there was also word that the Ravens are reaching out to him. But Kenny Galladay heading to New York to meet Joe Judge and hang out with him for a few days. There was no way he was going to leave there without a contract, and now the man is making $18 million a, $18 million a year. Pretty hefty price tag, but he has the youth and has the talent to earn that amount of money. Looking at the Giants as a whole right now, I truthfully think in the NFC East, this Giants team can make a push for a playoff spot out of their division. I don't think there is any way I see two teams make it out of that division, one winning the division and the other winning a wild card spot. But you know in that division, last year they went below 500 and you made the playoffs. Giants, really, if you went 9-7, and seven, there's a good chance you win the, win the division this year, but we will have to see. But looking at them currently, like I said, Daniel Jones at the quarterback, you are getting arguably – when healthy, the best running back in the NFL back in Saquon Barkley, at worst, a top five running back when healthy. And then at the receiving core with Kenny Galladay and his new teammates and Sterling Shepard, Darius Slayton, both guys with great hands, great slot guys. And then you have John Roth, Ross also added to this team to the depth chart. John Ross never really lived up to what we hoped he was. I mean, the dude holds the fastest 40 yard time in NFL history at the combine. So a lot of hope for him, but he never lived up to it in Cincinnati. Maybe the New York Giants can turn it around, but we will have to see. Then on the tight end position, you got Evan Ingram and Kyle Rudolph. So the receiving core has plenty of depth already with Galladay, John Ross, and Rudolph being added. And before that, they still had Shepard, Slayton, and Ingram. So the receiving core is stacked for the most part. You got a number one wide out that's a go up and get it guy and Kenny Galladay and you got the speed and you got the hands and Shepard and maybe John Ross if you turn it around and then you got your big red zone target in Engram or Rudolph I kind of like that they signed Rudolph because Engram is kind of deteriorating a little bit but he's still young he could get it to he could turn it around as well just like John Ross but even if he doesn't Kyle Rudolph can definitely fill in the hole Evan Engram cannot looking at the other side of the football Leonard Williams they originally franchise tagged him, but then they worked out a deal to make it a long-term deal. Glad that could happen. He was once a pretty high prospect to the New York Jets, and then they got rid of him. But they also have some other talent on that team, and Jabril Peppers, Logan Ryan. They also added James Bradbury from the Panthers and Lorenzo Carter. So this team is finally getting there. Joe Judge, pretty good coach so far. Yeah, they went 6-10 and 10 last year, but overall, Joe Judge has shown that he can coach. He's making games closer. He's not going from blowouts anymore. He's going from really tight games, from blowouts to really tight games, so winning the games by by edging it out. So he they are improving, and I do think with this new addition of Kenny Galladay and John Ross and getting um, Leonard Williams to say this team is going to be better than hopefully a 6-10 and 10 team, but everything is going to rely on Daniel Jones. He has the weapons around him. It's just going to determine can he win football games he has a fumble problem I assume the Giants will more than likely more likely than not hopefully addressed free agents or offensive line of free agency a little bit more and then maybe in the NFL draft get a lockdown corner such as Patrick Sertain or Caleb Farley we will have to see but if they get one of those guys like Sertain or Farley that could take this defense to the next level that could fit in there with Peppers and Logan Ryan two good safeties they need a shutdown corner Bradbury can help them out as well this secondary could become elite pretty quickly and then the offense, like I said, the players are there. We just have to see if Daniel Jones can give them the football. Overall, looking up, looking across the division, I really thought Washington football team was a clear takeaway winner, in my opinion, especially when they added Curtis Samuel. But I'm not too sure on Ryan Fitzpatrick to play a whole football season. I still don't think Washington is done making a move at quarterback. But if they are, and they're sticking with Fitzpatrick or Heineke, Daniel Jones, you really don't have any excuse if 
to be honest, that's your biggest competitor in the NFC East. And yes, the Cowboys are a problem with Dak and with Zeke and Amari Cooper and CeeDee Lamb. But right now, and Eagles, of course, but I don't think Jalen Hurts is the only thing the Eagles have at this point. And there's a lot of problems outside of him. I think the Eagles are going to be well, well below 500. I think that's a 4-12 and team. So between the Giants, Cowboys, and Washington, there is no clear number one. And that is a good sign for the Giants because it means they have a chance Everything is going to come down to Daniel Jones. Can he get rid of his fumble problem? But can the Giants protect him? However, he has a number one receiver to go up and get it. He did have Golden Tate last year, who was a great receiver. And Kenny Galladay is kind of filling his shoes. And I do think Kenny Galladay is better than Golden Tate. But even with a good receiving core, Daniel Jones didn't make it happen last year. So we will have to see. Everything is on his shoulders if they want to win the division. They're in the spot to do it. I thought, like I said, Washington was going to take it away with Curtis Samuel, but with the Giants answering right back and getting Ken and Galladay, they're kind of even in neck and neck in this division. It's going to be cool to see. I just hope it's not another below 500 team that we kind of laugh at in the playoffs. I hope whoever comes out of this division is an actual threat that we're seeing could be a Super Bowl contender. I doubt that will happen, but I'd love to see it. Overall, Kenny Galladay, I like the move for the Giants to sign him, but if Daniel Jones is garbage, Kenny Galladay is just going from one losing team in the Detroit Lions to another with the New York Jets. However, the man is getting paid $18 million. He can't complain with the page type of paycheck he is getting, so good for him in that aspect. And the Giants do need a couple guys to turn around and see their better days, such as John Ross and Evan Ingram and Jabril Peppers. We really need to see their top potential for them to go to the next level, but I think Joe Judge is the right coach to take them there. But like I said, we will have to see. Let me know what you guys think. Do you think, you know, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe the Eagles will win the division. Anything is possible. Right now, I think the Giants, given the addition of Kevin, Kenny Galladay, is possibly in the best spot in that division to win it if Daniel Jones can take the next step. If he's the same guy he was last year, they're going to be the same team last year and go 6-10. and 10. But And then the Washington football team and Dak Prescott and the Cowboys will probably get better. But we will have to see. Like I said, let me know, let me know down in the comments below who will win this division. Is it going to be Washington? Is it going to be New York? Is it going to be Dallas? Is it going to be Philadelphia? Who knows? Comment down below and make sure you put your favorite player as well. My favorite player of all time would probably have to be Victor Cruz, Salsa Dance. Pretty unique dance. Just a cool wide receiver watching growing up. But that's all. Thanks, guys. Tune in one.